Welcome to another KeyShot video. Today we're doing something a bit different. Render Weekly is a community of designers who create beautiful renderings each week on Instagram. Every Monday, Render Weekly shares a new prompt on their Instagram profile. Then designers from around the world spend the next week sharing their submissions for the week's challenge. Render Weekly Week 49 is brought to you by KeyShot. This week's challenge is all about creating an exploded view. So I'm going to share with you five tips on how to create your own exploded view using KeyShot. Uh, before we begin, I will mention an exploded view is an image that shows a product or an assembly in a disassembled state. They're useful for showing the relationship between various parts and components, and they're also popular in owner's manuals and assembly and repair instructions. So without further ado, let's check out our first tip. Tip number one is to choose a model with plenty of details and parts. So in this image on the right, it's actually a photograph by this artist, Todd McClellan. And um, what it does a good job of doing is creating a pleasing composition using plenty of parts. So the more pieces we have, the more interesting uh, kind of layouts and compositions we can make. So if I move on over to KeyShot, I've chosen to use a camping stove for today's uh, exploded view. It's got 26 parts and uh, it's a nice proper assembly as we can see in the scene tree. Uh, but before we move on any further, let's check out tip number two. So tip number two is going to be start with a new model set to build your exploded view in. So if we go back to KeyShot, I'm going to show you how to do that. If we find the three dots to the left of our uh, scene tree and our model sets, um, we can drag to the right to expose that model sets panel. And you'll see that we have one by default. If I were to right click and render a new thumbnail for it, it shows our stove in the assembled state. We'll create a new model set by clicking the add model set button. And we'll call this one exploded view. And then we will go ahead and check the link materials checkbox. And then um, I do not want to include any hidden objects. And you can see here it says select models to be cloned into the new model set. We want um, our entire uh, camping stove assembly to be cloned in. So we'll go ahead and say OK. And now from this model set, once we start moving parts around to create the exploded view, we'll be able to bounce between the default, which is assembled, and the exploded view. So tip number three is going to be use the geometry view to keep our composition in the real-time view. I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and decide on uh, how we want our final rendering to look like. And in this case, if I want my final rendering to be kind of a three-quarter tilt top-down view, or maybe I want it to be a little more symmetrical, maybe just kind of a top-down like this, what I can do is go ahead and set my camera. So this will be my render view. And if I want, I can go ahead and set an aspect ratio under my image. So if I decide that I want to do some sort of horizontal kind of a layout, I can kind of get everything lined up the way I want. And I could say, OK, this is the camera or the angle I will render out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set my perspective a little higher, maybe 90. So that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and save my camera. Now, if I want to start moving parts around, it, you're going to run into instances where you're constantly moving your camera. And one thing we can do is actually keep our camera where it's at, and we can open our window to expose the geometry view. Geometry view can be docked on top of your uh, library panel. If I make some room like this, and I, I'm going to right click and say, um, center and fit models. Here we go. So we see our model there. And now at this point, we can use the geometry view on the left hand side to work in primarily when we're moving parts around. And then on the right, we can keep our camera focused where it's at. So for instance, if I want to select the gas can, I could say move part, and we could start moving it. And in this case, it is composed of a couple of components. So I may want to choose the gas can from the scene tree. And then I could also say move selection. And now I can move the whole gas can component to the right. 
And as we move in, we can get nice and close. So maybe I want to move some of these other parts. In this case, I want to snap this one to the ground. And then when it's on the ground, I could go ahead and, uh, you know, move it into a different position if I wish. And we could continue to do this for various components. Move selection, snap to ground, move it over. Move selection, snap to ground, move it over. And this is kind of a nice way to get, you know, all the parts laid out initially. Um, so obviously there's a little bit of manual work when it comes to creating an exploded view. You know, it depends on the kind of layout you want and where you want to place your items. Uh, but having both of these two different uh, viewports makes it uh, quite a bit easier, in my opinion. Once I move this part over, let's take a look at the next tip. Ah, so tip number four is going to be move tool hotkey. So we have the ability to select a part, then right click on it and say move. But one thing that we can do to speed up our workflow is simply hover over a part with your mouse when nothing else is selected. And if I hit Control D or Command D, if you're on a Mac, it's going to select the part underneath your mouse. And then the move tool comes up. So at this point, I could move this to the ground and start moving it around. And when I'm done, if I deselect it and just hover my mouse over the next part and hit Control D, once again, I've got the next part. So pretty quickly, we can start moving things around. Um, if we have a box selection, so for example, if I want this, these three components here in the middle, if I were to create a box selection around them, if I drag, uh, hold shift and left click drag up, uh, anything I go through will be selected. So now with those selected, I can just hit control D. And once again, I can move this to the ground and move it wherever I want. And uh, let's check out our last tip here. Tip number five is going to be use the pattern tool to quickly make arrays. So this is kind of a different approach, but I thought this was fun. We have these three uh, arms here, and those are pot holders. So they put, uh, you put the pot that you're gonna boil the water in on top of there. And instead of spending the time to um, move these around and get them in the position that I want, uh, I'll show you a, a bit of a faster way to do that. So I'm going to start out with just one, moving just one of these arms, and I'll go ahead and do this in the uh, geometry view. So I'll right click and say move part, and you'll see that my move tool is kind of aligned to its uh, local axis. A way to make this easier is if I click global, we'll align the part to key shots axis. Now, as I start to rotate, if I hold shift, I can snap in 15 degree increments, and then I can snap to the ground. All right, so pretty good so far. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this manually so this part looks like it's aligned with that grid on the ground, and then I'm gonna move it over. Very well. So now I could continue that process for these next two pieces, but that might take a little while, and maybe I wanna create a pattern that's editable. Well, here's how I'm going to do this. If we go to the scene tree, I'm going to find the other two parts. I'm going to hold control to select both of those. Right click and I'm going to hide and lock those parts. And then what I'm going to do is take this part that's on the ground. We're going to right click on that and we're going to put this into a new model set. So we're going to create a new model set from the selection and we'll call this pot arm, and then I am going to leave the materials linked, and you'll see, because we selected it first, we don't need to deselect the rest of the parts. So we'll hit OK. And now we're in the uh, new model set with just this arm. Here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna turn this off for a second and return to the exploded view. And then for this last one that's on the ground already, I'm going to right click on it and hide and lock. So at this point, we're not using any of the original arms from the original assembly. But if I turn on the pot arm uh, model set, we can see that this piece comes into view. 
Um, the reason we went and put it in a model set is because in order to create a pattern, you must pattern at the model level or the group level. So what that means is now that this is in its own model set, it's its own model, I can right click on that camping stove level and we could, um, oh, did I misspeak? We can click on the top level here and we can make a pattern from it. Whereas if we were to grab one of these pieces within the assembly, you'll notice there is no option to pattern. You have to pattern at the model level. So I'll grab this model, right click, make a pattern. And then from here, we can go ahead and say we want three of these in the X axis. And we do not want to center and we do not want to resize the environment. And then we can play with the spacing of these. And this is quick and easy to do and, um, and you know really uh, gives you the way to precisely place these parts. And if we're going to have um, larger assemblies with many more identical parts, this is a quick, easy way to do it. And if you really wanna have fun with it, you can actually make circular patterns and do all sorts of cool things with it as well, which just, again, would take a lot more time to set up manually. So now that I've done this, I'll hit okay. And you'll see we have three identical arms. If I wanted to at any point, I could just collapse those. And then I could go ahead and move them all together and find out how I wish to place these to finalize my composition. So we have a lot of different um, tips and tricks there. Hopefully those are gonna save you some time and allow you to create your own exploded views. We're looking forward to seeing your submissions. Um, so after you've made your exploded view, be sure to share it on Instagram, tag your image with Keyshot3D and Render Weekly, and then you'll have a chance to be featured. So again, we're looking forward to seeing what you have. And until next time, happy rendering.